Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making plastic out of sulfur instead of carbon. So I have here a powder of pure sulfur. This is actually ground up crystals of sulfur molecules that look like this. The sulfur atoms are in these rings of eight sulfur atoms, but then these rings all stack together to form the crystal. But watch what happens when I heat this up. It starts to melt the crystal so that there are now individual molecules of these sulfur rings. And these rings can all slide past each other now, so the viscosity actually becomes less viscous than water. So you can see this is just like orange water now. It's not viscous at all. But then something interesting starts to happen. If you heat it up past 159 Celsius, then the rings actually start to break apart. Now you'd think that would make it less viscous even more, but what actually happens is those broken apart rings actually start to polymerize together, and they form long chains of sulfur. Suddenly it gets thick. Look how thick it's getting. Now it's kind of like a little syrupy. Suddenly it becomes really thick, like syrup. Look at that. And these chains can contain over 100,000 individual sulfur atoms. So it becomes over 2,000 times more viscous than its original liquid. But this is still just elemental sulfur. It's only reacting with itself. But if you heat it further, then the long chains of sulfur break apart and it becomes much less viscous again. So it's way less viscous now. But then if I just pour this out into some water, now it will form the polymer again. And when it cools, I can actually get the plastic sulfur. So this actually just feels like regular rubber or like just normal plastic that you can stretch and it deforms and it'll even recoil back on itself. You can see how stretchy it is. So this is actually a polymer here. It's just a polymer of sulfur. And it acts just like a regular plastic. And you can even reform it just like plastic as well. But then after a while, it'll actually start to migrate back into its regular S8 form and become crystal again. So it becomes really hard after a while. Also, another cool thing about doing this reaction is it usually starts on fire when you pour it out. So when I pour it out here, you can see this really beautiful fire that forms. It actually burns with a rich blue fire, but it kind of looks purple here with the dark sulfur behind it. This is so cool. Now, another cool thing we can do is change the solid form without heating it up, but actually take some heat out of it and cool it down. So you can see this regular powdered sulfur just looks yellow here. This is the regular color that you usually see sulfur as. But if we cool it down, it forms a different crystal structure that actually doesn't reflect yellow light anymore, but reflects all the different wavelengths of light, so it looks white. So you can see we start out with a yellow powder here, then after a while it goes completely white. <laughs> Look how cool this is. Sulfur that's not yellow. But then if we heat it back up again, it turns right back to yellow. So this is really cool seeing all the different structures we can make with just pure sulfur. So because sulfur doesn't form strong double bonds, when you have pure elemental sulfur, it usually consists of cyclic S8 molecules that form an octet like this. But besides forming these cyclic S8 structures, there can also be cyclic sulfur with six, seven, eight, 10, and 12 atoms. In fact, solid sulfur can form over 30 different structures. That's more than any other element in the periodic table. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, or you can hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And also check out theactionlab.com where I sell my Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.